Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what's going on with Jamaican prisoners. Inmates, when we um, think about inmates, we think about they've done something wrong, they're criminal, they're in, in jail, um, they should do the term for the crime they've committed, and we tend to put them at the back of our mind, unless, of course, we're related to them. If we're related to them, we then see them as individuals, as husbands, brothers, fathers, uncles, who are in there, they may have made a mistake, they um, lack of foresight, anger, whatever's caused them to be in there. Desperation, frustration, could be a number of reasons why people become criminals and why they become inmates. Anyway, what Jamaica um, has recently reported on is that there's a 300,000 Jamaican Scott dollars scholarship grant going to three inmates. Is it three inmates or four? Four. Four inmates and one correctional officer. They're being given 300,000 and it's each per year. So each one of them are getting a scholarship for 300,000 Jamaican dollars per year for each inmate and one correctional officer. My first um, reaction was, how did they actually select the four applicants, the four, success, the four successful applicants? I mean, there I saw the word eligible being banded around. What makes them eligible to get that grant? So apparently they um, have been awarded this grant. It is an online course, but it says four Jamaican inmates and one Jamaican correctional officer have been selected as the first recipients to benefit from full scholarships valued at 300,000 each per year to pursue associate degrees with the University of Commonwealth Caribbean, UCC. The new students will pursue the Associate of Science degree in Business Administration online at the St. Catherine's Adult Correctional Centre as a pilot project beginning in the spring semester 2020 and it will last up to two years. Now I think that's really a good idea. I mean I think it would be, I think all inmates should be in a position not necessarily to have something that expensive as a scholarship but they should all be doing some kind of education, building up their, their competencies while they're in prison. Some may not even want to, some are demotivated, some people think, what's the point? And I can understand that, you know, when they do have such um, good qualifications, when they come out of prison and they're expecting to, you know, take advantage of the opportunities, it must be frustrating as opposed to liberating if they can't find people to employ them because they are ex-inmates or ex-criminals. So it all depends. When they are providing these, um, these scholarships, are they also going to provide them with employment when they come out? Apparently, um, people who qualify for some of these scholarships, I know in America, if they've got two and a half years left to serve, they tend to put them on these online courses so they have something with, for when they come out. But like I said, in the UK, they've actually got a company who um, recruits or who knows companies who accept ex-convicts for, um, they recruit them, basically. So um, an inmate could come out, there could be a stigma. They could, if, they, if they're not supported outside, when they come outside, because they're talking about they're going to give them these educational opportunities so they don't go back. They call it recidivism. They don't want them to go back into the police system or back into the criminal system. But it's fine giving them these opportunities, these scholarship opportunities and educational opportunities. But if they're not accompanied with some kind of support outside, places or, or businesses that are going to recruit them, then that, that can cause them to go right back and think, what is the point? I've got all this education, nobody wants to employ me, and then you're back to square one. So I think there should be a holistic package, not only the scholarship, but they have that support to get a job and, um, you know, to see how they go, put them on a more firmer footing. 
Um, the initiative which aims at boosting the educational capabilities of the participants is being facilitated through a memorandum of understanding among the Ministry of National Security through the Department of Correctional Services, Stand Up for Jamaica, a non-governmental organisation and the UCC. Speaking at the signing ceremony at UCC on January the 6th, Minister of State in the Ministry of National Security, Honourable Rudyard Spencer, said the programme seeks to enhance the rehabilitation process and facilitate the successful development of inmates and correctional officers. Now, yeah, it will facilitate their development and they will, um, of course, the more education you have, the more fluid you can be, the more autonomous you have, more opportunities. I mean, even if it's something you can start for yourself, you can start your own business or something. So as long as they don't raise their expectations, that's a good thing. This is noteworthy and it shows that we are willing to pool our resources for the advancement of the most vulnerable. And yes, ex-inmates, they are vulnerable. When they come out, remember they've got, they've been out of the system for a long time. They're not sure how things work. Mind you, I don't know how it is in modern prisons, whether or not they're kept in touch and they know about everything that's going on. But if they aren't um, savvy with IT or, you know, other things that have been going on, they are going to need to have that kind of transitional programme so that they don't feel so vulnerable. Because like I said, they've got the stigma, they might still feel worthless, they're going to need motivating. Um, and if they don't get a job, they could become vulnerable to the offending through lack of opportunities. So Mr Spencer congratulated the individuals who have been chosen to participate in the programme, pointing out that this is a life-changing opportunity, will not only benefit them and their families, but also represents a sensible investment for the society. I, yeah, I was wondering how they were chosen. Apparently, across all facilities, there has been 800 online educational opportunities. So even though these four got the scholarship, well, five got the scholarship, there has been online educational opportunities, 800 across all the facilities. Bearing in mind, there's nearly 4,000 inmates. So proportionately, it's not that much, but it's better than a kick in the teeth. At least some people get it. So we've got centres, the correctional centres in Jamaica. We've got the South Camp Edot. Adult Correctional Centre, we've got the New Broughton Sunset Ad Adult Correctional Centre for elderly men. Wow, they even put it in categories. I think that's quite good to separate elderly men actually, because can you imagine if you've got young people in there trying to abuse the elderly, that wouldn't be good. We've got Richmond Farm Correctional Centre, we've got St Catherine's Adult Correctional Centre and Reception Centre, we've got the Tamarin Farm Correctional Centre the Tower Street Adult Correctional Centre and Reception Centre. We've got the Correctional Centre TSACC. Oh, that's the Tower Street Adult Correctional Centre. And it's almost double the capacity of the close to 200-year-old institution located in Kingston. It's overrun, that one. According to the latest figures released by the government at the end of 2018, the TSACC, that's the Tower, the Tower Street, um, TACC was accommodating 1,619 convicts or 90.5% above its maximum prisoner capacity of 850. Can you imagine what that's going to be like, being in such double overcrowded? The total prisoner po population at all facilities is 3,698. I'm not quite sure what those figures, what year those figures are taken from. 41 more than what is it was said at the end of 2017. So I don't know if that was 2008, 2019 figures. I'm not sure. But at the same time, 361 adults were already found guilty and were still waiting sentences. So you're going to add 360. So yeah, it's nearly about 4,000, maybe a bit above, depending on when these figures were taken from. The total prison population, which includes 791 being held in remand at the Horizon Adult Remand Centre at Spanish Town Road on the Kingston Lower St Andrew border, 
or 790. If the remanded prisoners were subtracted from the total prison population, the TSACC would be holding more than half the total number of people in prison. So that tower, street one, is must be massive, but it's also massively overrun, overcrowded. Um, centres for women, women, we've got the Fort Augusta Adult Correctional Centre, We've, and there are three correctional centres, juvenile correctional centres. The Amadale Juvenile Correctional Centre, that's in Alexandria St Anne Parish, and that's a centre for girls. There's a capacity of 40 there. You've got the Hilltop Juvenile Correctional Centre, that's Bamboo St Anne Parish, same parish, capacity of 98. You've got the Rio Cobra Juvenile Correctional Centre, that's in Tredega Park, Spanish Town. St Catherine Parish, Parish, and that's got a capacity of 120. There are two remand centres, the Horizon Adult Remand Centre, St Andrew Juvenile Remand Centre. Um, St Andrew is obviously in St Andrew. In addition, many remand prisoners are held in police station goals, so that's not all of them. Today's signing shows that we understand the limitation and hear the cries of the offenders who face difficulties qualifying for employment opportunities because of educational limitations. I wonder, yeah, okay. Therefore, we are increasing the marketability of inmates and officers by providing sustainable scholarships and grants through worthwhile partnerships, Mr Spencer said. He lauded the UCC and Stand Up for Jamaica for assisting in transforming lives. Simply locking up people and throwing away the key is no longer a part of the correctional process. We have shifted gears. Our focus is not on punishment, but on redemption, he said. For her part, Executive Vice President Academic Affairs UCC, Professor Bernadette Warner, said the vision is to build the scholarship programme to include more eligible inmates and other correctional facilities in due course. She said orientation begins on January the 8th, which is today, while classes should commence on Sunday, January the 11th. Professor Warner said the Department of Correctional Services will provide the students with an appropriately equipped lab, books, material and student support services in collaboration with Stand Up for Jamaica. We will meet the cost of non-tuition fees, apart from each student's application and miscellaneous fees, which will also be addressed by the university of the Commonwealth Caribbean, she informed. Meanwhile, director, Stand Up for Jamaica, Andre Schwab said, the initiative will provide inmates with the tools they need to become productive citizens and will assist in reducing civitism. The civitism, but that's what I'm saying, you know, it's fine giving them all these opportunities, but there must be some support, some support when they leave the correctional facility. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Diane McIntosh, said education is a critical component in the rehabilitation of inmates. It has been proven that robust education programmes, including the integration of higher education, reduces the risk of recidivism following the release of inmates into society, she said. Mrs McIntosh pointed out that more than 800 inmates are enrolled in educational programmes, both academic and vocational, across the nation's five adult correctional centres. Our reports show that these programmes work as approximately 54% of our inmates enrolled fall within the remedial group and it is my hope that with the introduction of online programmes inmates may have the opportunity to increase access to more diverse and extensive curriculum she said. Assumption that the criminals are not intelligent, wanting a better life? No. I think that's just some notes I made. Anyway, America has some similar programs, and I think the UK may have, but they've got one called REAP in America, and that trains MBA students in Colombia. We've got Getting to Yes, that's another educational program in the States for inmates teaching them negotiation, skill, negotiation skills. And like I said, will education programs liberate or frustrate inmates? Well, if it doesn't give them the opportunities they're expecting due to stigma and all other kinds of things. Uh, Mercy University in the USA, 71% have received higher education degrees while being inmates and 400 of their inmates have been educated. So 
So you do get some opportunities even while you're locked up. So that is great. So that's all for now. Bye bye.